One of the most amazing things that I saw when I was growing up was a grandmaster actually play a couple of us blindfolded. Are you able to play blindfolded? Blindfolded? Yeah, multiple, multiple, multiple people at the same time. Look, it's just it's a memory exercise. Okay. So, uh, I played once I, in 95. I, 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 I wish it was a memory exercise <laughs> for me. <laughs> no, it's, again, I, I cannot do many other things. But, 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 but how, many, really, how many people could you play simultaneously blindfolded? I played on once, and I just, uh, in 1985, I played 10, but, okay. but club players, not, not total managers. Um, I don't know, but it's just, it's, it's uh, quite, you know, a challenge to your to, to, to brain, so why should you do that? I think the world record is what? 52, 50. 52. And what was, uh, what was the score? That's the bit, it's total amateur. Yeah, and a lot of the games are over early. Yeah, the games are over early. Not, I, play, I play, again, just 10 real, real chess games. Mm -hmm. So, one was, by the way, a computer, Mephisto. So, <laughs> and that's the, I remember that, that game, so I, I, I not just, I, I won the game, it was, I won the match 9 to 1, so 8 wins, 2 draws, but in that game, against the machine, I, I announced made in 10 moves. <laughs> <laughs> Which the machine didn't see. Yeah. Yeah. And just Please. one thing about blindfold chess, because it's a fascinating thing for non-chess people, that again is seen as a memory exercise by, by chess people, and this was hailed, and you can go back to the days of you know, the great, the greatest player in the world at the time, the French player Philidor, 18th, who, century. 18th century, and there are actual you know, newspapers covering, he played two games simultaneously blindfolded, and it was hailed as the greatest feat of, of mental achievement in, in perhaps in history in the newspapers, <laughs> front pages, and this was a big deal. And then again, people learn that, okay, you can train your brain to do this. If you play chess, you can, as long as you can keep up with the positions. And But chess, it gets back to why chess has, has been this touchstone not just of AI and why it attracted so much attention in Deep Blue. And you write about this in the book, Gary's talked about it in the lectures, this sort of chess as a touchstone of intelligence. And it used to, before computers even existed and that AI became an issue, it was of human intelligence. And Binet, the great you know, psychologist, the creator, co-creator, you could say of you know, the IQ test, and you know, Stanford Binet, you know, rings a bell to every kid filling out little bubbles to get into college. Um, had, was fascinated with chess and chess masters. And he spent huge amounts of time doing studies on trying to figure out, because again, he, like generations after him, thought that if we can figure out why these people are so good at this damn game, we will have unlocked something. We're not sure what it is, but there's something there. And that got, again, the next 50 years, and they, the, the, the computer people thought the same thing about computers. If we can unlock this, if we can figure it, make a computer, to, and they were all totally wrong, and it's wonderful. Because these are the br these brilliant people, and they were totally misled about the nature of it. And it turns out that you know chess for humans is much more spatial than that. They see things. That's why it's a visualization exercise. It's not sheer recall. It's not sheer calculation. Humans and computers play completely differently. Computers calculate. Humans see. It's it's spatial relationships. Now they have brain scans, and they come dead in. They they have the brain scans that show which parts of the the mind light up. When a chess master is looking at, at the board, and it's totally different than someone doing math problems, for example. Mm -hmm. It's much more visual, and they see it, and they do these, this chunk, what they call chunking, and it's really quite fascinating.